NBA Youngboy and Fredo Bang got Baton Rouge turned up. But now, both these rappers are sitting down looking at some time. Let's run through Fredo Bang's rap sheet and it's come up to being TBG's top enforcer. Fredo Bang is a rapper from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, known for tracks like Ooh and Top featuring Lil Durk. But growing up, Fredo couldn't stay out of trouble or out of the streets. Fredo's older brothers were heavy in the streets and in and out of prison while he was growing up. Baton Rouge is a wild city and it ain't too many legal ways to get money, which means higher crime rates. Fredo calls it a death trap that leaves dudes like him with little options but to get it out the mud. Fredo first clicked up with his homie and future collaborator G Money in 4th grade. Around that same time, he also started hanging with his boy Crazy Trey. When he first started rapping, he linked up with G Money for tracks like iPhone 6 and Rainy Days. Later on, they both became members of the gang and record label Top Boy Gorillas or TBG. It's funny cuz, back in the day, NBA Youngboy was from TBG too. He was close to G Money's younger bro Lil Hurt. And when Youngboy first hopped off the porch and got in the streets, G Money was like a mentor to him. So, the first mixtape that Youngboy ever released, Life Before Fame, came out under TBG. But around that time, iPhone 6 was the hottest song on the streets of Baton Rouge. It had verses from G Money, Fredo, Boulevard Mail, and YMM Captain. Now, even though Youngboy wasn't on the song, you could see him in the background in a music video with his brother OG33. So at the time, G Money was a star of the TBG label, with Fredo as a close second. Youngboy ain't feel like his talent was getting the credit it deserved, cause his first mixtape ain't really do much. So he decided to go independent and start his own clique, Never Broke Again. When he left TBG, they were still on good terms. But once Youngboy went solo, he started throwing shots at his old homies, specifically G Money. At one point, he let it be known that G Money smashed his sister, which G later confirmed was true. So, it wasn't an all-out war just yet, but tension was building. By that point, Fredo and the rest of TBG was already running up millions of plays on YouTube and other streaming platforms. But problems with the law would keep him from taking his career to the next level and getting out the hood. Fredo caught his first charge in 2014 for second-degree battery after he broke this dude's nose in a fight back when he was in college. This led to him being forced to drop out just to fight the case. Then. His day one homie, Crazy Trey, was killed at Fredo's birthday party. Two other people was also killed in the shooting, and the fourth was injured, but survived. A 17-year-old named Akadrian Williams later pled guilty to three murders and one attempted murder and got sentenced to 40 years. Trey was one of Fredo's closest homies, so his death hit hard, and this just pushed him deeper into the streets to numb the pain of losing his boy. But he kept dropping tracks and was building a major buzz in the city. His track Thuggin' went viral and racked up millions of views. But right when his career was about to take off, Fredo got arrested again and spent the next few years locked down. In January 2016, he was arrested and charged with attempted second degree murder after a shooting that happened in November. According to the police, Fredo was at the crib when he got into an argument with the victim and a second suspect. After that, they went to the victim's apartment on the 4300 block of Denham Street where they started fighting again. It went from 0 to 100 when the second suspect pulls out a gun and Fredo went and grabbed his burner from the car. They got into a shootout and a random car with someone in it ended up getting hit. Fredo and the other dude fled the scene in Fredo's whip, but they crashed into another car while trying to get away. Fredo was arrested and charged with attempted second degree murder, illegal use of a weapon, and aggravated criminal damage to property. At first, they gave him a bond of $70,000 which he posted and then got released. But the cops ended up finding a gun in his whip that was tied to some other shootings. So they ended up revoking his bail and he had to sit down until the trial. They were trying to give him a max of 45 years if convicted and he spent several years fighting the case. Plus, he was still out on bond for the battery charge from 2014. But he lucked up and ended up getting his charges reduced to illegal use of a firearm and criminal damage to property from attempted murder. He copped 7 years for the criminal damage to property and 2 years for the gun charges to run back to back. He got released after about two and a half years with five years of parole. In an interview with Say Cheese TV, Fredo said he got into like 20 fights while locked up and came out of every one on top. He was eventually released in 2018, but while he was locked up, he lost another close homie to the streets. In September 2017, G Money got shot and killed, leaving a recording studio in Baton Rouge. What's crazy is, on the night he was killed, Fredo was supposed to be getting out. He and G Money was supposed to link up after Fredo got out. But when news broke that G Money got killed, the prison staff thought it was too dangerous to let Fredo out, feeling like he might either kill someone or get killed himself. 
So instead of being released that night, they kept him in for six more months. Now, after losing two of his day ones to gun violence, G Money and Crazy Terry, Fredo was getting tired of the street life. Before he went to jail, TBG and G Money was still cool with NBA. Young boy ain't blow up on a national level yet, and no blood was spilled on either side. But when he got out, it was a whole different story. Young boy and G Money continued to take shots at each other back and forth. This eventually led to G Money to drop the diss track industry, Young Boy Never Broke Again response, where he responded to all the threats and accusations Young Boy made over the years. The track was released in late August, but then two weeks later, G Money was dead. NBA Young Boy and his camp was closely investigated by police for G Money's death. In 2021, an NBA affiliate named NBA Pap was arrested and charged with the rapper's murder. So after G Money got killed, the beef between NBA and TBG went from diss songs to bodies dropping. Over the next few years, multiple members from both sides will lose their lives in this deadly beef. After G Money passed, TBG lost its most famous rapper. Its second and third most famous artist, Fredo Bang, and another dude named Boulevard Quick was both still locked up. So another member of TBG, who they call Lit Yoshi, would step up and keep applying pressure to NBA while his homies was locked up. But Lit Yoshi wasn't just a rapper. He was really one of TBG's main shooters. So he ain't only take the responsibility of dissing them on wax, but he was really out there in the field too. In May 2018, NBA Youngboy's manager, a dude who went by the name of Dump, was gunned down while talking to family friends in his front yard in Baton Rouge. He wasn't even involved in the streets like that besides managing Youngboy. So they already knew it was tied to the beef between NBA and TBG. Lil Yoshi was later arrested in connection with Dump's murder. He allegedly did the hit with fellow TBG rapper Boulevard Quick. Then, just a few months later, Boulevard Quick gets knocked off outside his home at the Lakeside Villa Apartments. No arrest been made in connection with Boulevard Quick's murder, but the police think it was get back for the murder of Dump. But all while this was going down, Fredo stayed out the way and left Baton Rouge after getting out of prison. He was still diss young boy on social media and in his music, and they got into it on social media after they found out they was dropping their projects on the same day. When Youngboy announced the release for his album Top, Fredo posted on a story with the caption, Guess me and my son dropping on the same day with two laughing emojis. Youngboy ain't like the disrespect and called him out on IG Live. Fredo just continued to clown him and tell his fans to go buy Youngboy's album because he sounds pretty mad. But other than that, Fredo stayed out the beef and tried to focus on his music. But staying out the way ain't keeping him out of trouble completely. He was recently arrested after police raided his crib looking for his boy, Lil Yoshi. Lil Yoshi's killing spree on the streets of Baton Rouge came to an end in 2020 when he was arrested and charged with seven counts of attempted murder. They connected him to the murder of Dump, where another woman was also shot but survived. They also connected Lil Yoshi to a shooting in Miami that left several people injured and one dead. Youngboy was the target and it happened when he was leaving the Trump International Hotel where he was staying. Youngboy ain't get touched, but his girlfriend at the time was hitting the shoulder. So in total, Yoshi was facing seven attempted murders with new charges popping up left and right. Yoshi posted a $1.8 million bond and was staying with Fredo at his crib in Miami. In July 2021, the SWAT team raided their spot after getting the tip that Lil Yoshi was involved in another shooting that happened in Slidell, Louisiana in 2020. Police say an NBA affiliate was the target of the shooting and was hit along with another person after a driver in another car shot into their car. Some think the target was Youngboy's cousin, NBA Michi, and that he cooperated with police to take Lil Yoshi down. But this ain't been proven, and it's just street rumors. But our video, Fredo Bang and Lil Yoshi snitched on by NBA affiliate, will give you all the info you need to know about this case, so go peep that if you want to know more. While the police was raiding the house, looking for Lil Yoshi, they found a stolen car, body armor, and three illegal guns. Because they was found in Fredo's crib, he was arrested with Yoshi and brought into police custody. Since he's a convicted felon, Fredo ain't allowed to be in possession of either guns or body armor, and he definitely not supposed to have a stolen car. Fredo's bodyguards came forward and said the body armor was theirs. Fredo's lawyers also said he had no idea the car was stolen. So, he ain't in as much trouble as his boy Lil Yoshi, but he's still going through it. He had his court date on July 23rd, where a judge denied him bond. So, he gonna stay locked up for now. And since he was on parole in Louisiana, the charge he's facing is in his home state, not Florida. He was supposed to be sent back to Louisiana for the trial, but this all got delayed after he caught COVID in August while in Miami-Dade Correctional Center. It don't seem like the charges against Fredo Bang are too serious, and he'll probably get him dropped or be released with time served at his next court date. But it also seems like the justice system is trying to go hard on him, maybe to get him to talk. 
They already got a Fed investigation in the NBA, and it seems like any day now, they can hit him with a RICO charge. They also going just as hard on Lil Yoshi, and it seems like the Feds and the police in Baton Rouge want all these rappers locked up for as long as possible. So far, Fredo's kept it solid, and it don't seem like he'll snitch if he's only facing a probation violation. But this case is still ongoing, so tap in for updates.